in your hands. Thank you. Um, perhaps many of you have heard the joke about how many rabbis does it take to change a bulb? And the answer is change. And um, I think, I think what we are discussing really here today is not only if we need to reorganize the Jewish world, I think what we are discussing is change. We're discussing change because if my late grandmother who died 40 years ago would come here today, she wouldn't recognize anything in the world that we live in. She wouldn't know what a computer is, she wouldn't know what a fax is, she wouldn't know what a microwave is, and when we look at the Jewish world, when we look at many of the Jewish organizations, I think the relevant question to ask is, how much are they really relevant today to the needs of this generation of young Jews? Yossi has spoken about the fact that many of the traditional functions don't exist anymore. My question is not only one of Jewish continuity, because continuity is a passive word. My question is one, how much do we in the world today, where Jews, who are the most global people, have become very diversified, when Jews, in many cases, don't take Judaism for granted, when they live a transformation in the society around them, where religion may not be relevant, where traditional forms of life are slowly disappearing, when they have undergone, because of modern technology, a cultural revolution, how much are the Jewish organizations in tune with that? How many answers can they provide? And without wanting to throw the baby with the water, I think that many of the organizations are still doing a very good job by way of social services and helping needy families and so on, and philanthropy. But I think what should really concern us today is one thing which I believe is much more important today than Jewish continuity, because it is the key to Jewish continuity, it's the question of Jewish identity. In many cases today, Jewish identity is conditional. It is not automatic. It is tentative. It is not automatic. And for young people today, the question is, how do we transmit Judaism, which will make it interesting, which will make it relevant, which will make it an element that they want to keep in their lives? What is it that we can provide as a common language in order to maintain a sense of peoplehood? These are the two questions, and I think, because I don't have very much time to elaborate, and because we were asked to bring some ideas for solutions, I really and truly am not that concerned with structural reform or with what kind of an organization we're going to create. My first concern is, what are we going to do about education? What is it, the message, what is the kind of message that we're going to transmit, if you wish, Masoret ve Kabbalah, Masoret meaning transmitting, Kabbalah meaning receiving. What are we transmitting and how to a generation that lives in a totally different world where religion takes a different place, where it is optional? What exactly are we going to transmit? So my two solutions or my two little points that I would like to make, one is try to put together not a great structure. Take some of the best minds in the Jewish world, in education, philosophy, um, culture. Put them together and try to foster together to think not about the day as it is today, but as it's going to be tomorrow. And let us try to see if they can come up with an answer about how and what kind of Judaism we're going to transmit. As I said, synagogue is certainly relevant for some, not necessarily for all. Those who live in a Jewish, very deeply rooted Jewish traditional world don't need the kind of statement that I make. But the majority don't. So we need that team of good educators, brilliant minds to think together how and what is the message that we're going to transmit through education. And the second, I think, was hinted at by Ariel. I believe that with the media that are at our disposal today, we can reach every house, every Jewish mind, 
by way of computers, by way of fast communications, we have today a medium which in a way not only has revolutionized and changed our lives, but can be used effectively in order to be able to make that connection, reach the common ground, reach the minds, and keep us together in the diversity, in the pluralism that exists. The common denominator, the common message must be kept, and I believe we do have that opportunity today. Thank you.